Okay, so what I'd like to talk about today is just how to do some simple things with the website, uh, the student seminars website. And this, this video is for seminars website organizers. If you're not organizing the seminars website, it's probably not of much use. Um, so what I'll talk about is how do I add new talks, how do I change the abstract or add a new abstract, and how do I change or add a summary. Um, and so mon many of you will not be familiar with how Git works. So I'll do this all through the web interface first, right? So first of all, we want to navigate to our repository. Um, so what you do is you go to the home page, uh, scroll down, and there's a link to the repository. This is the co most convenient way to get to the repository, or you can just bookmark the repository um, on your own. So you just click bookmark, and that will add it to your bookmarks. I don't know how many people use bookmarks still, but this is a good way to bookmark the repository. Um, and then what you do is you go into, so let's say we're going to schedule a new talk. The new talks are stored in the data slash schedule folder, right? So each of them has a term. So this is 2016 September fall term, 2017 winter term, and 2017 uh, spring term. So the t format of all the talks is fairly simple. It's just JSON, right? And we have location, time, title, a list of tags, an identifier, and that's just a unique token, a unique string. So none of the other talks, no talk can have a duplicate identifier, right? I don't know actually what goes wrong, but stuff does go wrong if you have two talks of the same identifier. And you have a speaker. So how do I add a new talk? It's actually not so hard. The easiest way is just to copy, copy this talk, uh, and then make sure you have a comma. So JSON is a very fussy format. Make sure you don't have any extra commas at the end. And make sure you have all the commas you need in the middle. Um, make sure you have the right date. So maybe it's 420, might as well. Um, give it a title, talk, give it the right tags, give it a unique identifier, and then the speaker. And usually for the identifier, we do we do the initials of the speaker. So JB for James By, and then some word or abbreviation like matter for metric embeddings and dimensionality reduction uh, some some you know phrase that describes the, the content of the talk and that's just so for uniqueness right so it's unlikely that the same person will talk about the same thing twice so that so this this will ensure uniqueness okay so that's how we add schedule oh and I let me confirm so how do you actually add the talk what you do is you put a put a commit message here so what did I do added new talk and you just click this button the screen button commit changes um, so that's how you schedule new talks how do I change the abstract of a talk so let's say we know the identifier of a talk right and that's the first step is what is the identifier of the talk so maybe it's Anton's talk on the Offentine approximation we want to memorize the identifier am hyphen RT and how do I change the abstract or add a new abstract? So let's say we don't have an abstract yet. You can check by going to the abstract folder and seeing if there's an am-rt file. There is. So we already have an abstract, so we just edit it. If there's not yet an abstract, we create a new file with the right name, and we put the abstract. This talk will be about whatever. Um, so again, if you add the new file, down there there's a link to commit. Otherwise, the abstract format is fairly simple. It's just Markdown. If you're not familiar with Markdown, it's a good time to learn. Um, maybe I'll make another video on the, the particular flavor of Markdown that we're using. But a good way to learn the flavor of Markdown is just to go to uh, Summary. and I mean, adding summaries is the same as adding abstracts, except in the Summary folder and read my summary on hyper-complex numbers. So this is a good summary because it includes everything you might want to know about Markdown. For example, how do I include inline math? Well, double backticks for inline math. What about block math? Triple backticks followed by the word math for block math. What about an image? Well, there's an image on this, this too. Uh, it might be down here. Images use the bang, ex the exclamation mark, followed by, ah, exclamation mark, followed by a description of the image, followed by the URL of the image. And a good time, actually, how do I upload images? So if you want to include an image in the summary, obviously you need to upload images. 
everything that's uploaded goes in static. So in static images, you can upload files, right? So you go to static images and click upload, and you drag your images here. And then where are the images available from? They're available from the website URL slash images slash uh, whatever, right? So if I go to the website and I go slash images slash logo dot PNG, then that's the image of the logo. Um, but yeah, so that how do you upload images? You can do it all through the web interface. Of course, if you're familiar with Git, it might be easier to just go through Git. Uh, so adding a summary is the same idea as adding abstract. Remember what the identifier is and add the file here. Uh, that's all for this video. Maybe in the next video I'll talk about how Markdown works. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.